What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? This is your boy, MM2K, back again with another PNTS Patreon first. Um, and this is a very special video um, because I'm going to be addressing a couple of things. Um, one, I, I want to address the Stadia community over a recent event involving a, a real close friend of mine um and then the second thing that i want to address is kind of in relation to stadia but not so much but i want to address the gaming community as a whole and talk about this whole x cloud destroying stadia once again thing which we got to get off of this because it's not just about stadia it's about the expectations that we're setting for cloud gaming. We're setting the expectations low for cloud gaming by making such comments. And that doesn't push technology forward. Um, xCloud right now is at a very low bar. We want it to get better because as it gets better, all of its competing entities that surround it get better. But to put our eggs in the basket of the lowest common denominator right now, is not good for tech, cloud gaming, but it's not good for technology altogether. So we're going to talk about that. But first and foremost, um, I want to thank everybody that came to listen. Again, this is going to be a PNTS Patreon first, and then um, a day or so afterwards. I don't want to hold this too long when it becomes irrelevant. Um, a few days afterwards, sometime that subsequent weekend, because I'm recording this on a Friday. Uh, sometime the subsequent weekend, either Saturday or Sunday, depending upon where I think it may be best to release it. Because I don't want it absorbing the oxygen out of anything else. Really, we shouldn't even be. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm I'm a little, I'm slightly agitated. I'm a little perturbed. And I'm, and I'm saddened that we even got to have this conversation. This is something extra, but not something extra like, wow, we got some extra news. I want to talk about something. No, this is, this is, it's borderline. <sighs> I, I'm, I'm known to be sharp and I'm known to be very blunt. So I'm trying I'm trying to scale back some of my blunt stuff. So if you see me catching myself at work, I, I'll say it's it's very it, it's dismaying. Very dismaying to see um that there was a, even a need for this. I think people should have known better and they need to get a gra they need to get a grapple on their emotions. Because I see a lot of emotions running high. I get that this platform is new. But this ain't the first day that y'all been on the planet Earth dealing with a new product that you may like. Like, we got to get it together, people. You know what I'm saying? We got to get it together. So, that said, I, I, I want to address um, I want to address those two things again. xCloud and why we, we, we got to be careful here. We want xCloud to get better, but we don't want to judge by the lowest common denominator. And I'll explain what all that means in a little bit. And we don't want to, um, also, we don't want to, uh, as, a, as, a, as a community stadia, we don't want to um, go down a particular path as far as getting all emotionally worked up and charged up and all that other stuff. So let me do this because I'm going to pull something up. But again, thank you. Project or slides? Is it? Is it, is it what is that? Slides? Google slide? A uh, Google project? I want to because I got a presentation here that I just thought of that's going to be relevant to all this. But what you're watching right here on the screen is, um, geez, Christ, you're watching um, uh, the GDC from 2019. It was a very great eye-opening show. Google, is it Google Slides? I can't find, all of a sudden it's giving me a hard time with my slides. Google Slides, there we go. Okay, that's what it is, Google Slides. I don't know why I thought it was Google Project. Cause I got a presentation in here that I think will be very relevant. Um, Cloud Gaming, why Stadia? Cloud Gaming, Expose. Let me see which one it is. I got a couple of them in here. Yeah, okay, this is the one. I got two of them. I got a cloud gaming expose. Um, what is this? 
GeForce Now versus Stadia. Now I don't want to. I, I want to do cloud gaming episode one, where it talks about all of them. I think this is the one where it talks about all of them. Uh, yes, it is. Okay, all right. Sorry for the babble, people. All right, so let's get into it. All right, so here's the deal, y'all. Um, okay, let's just let's get let's get right to it. Okay, so the good homie Chase of Stadia Talk. He's a pillar within the community. You guys knew him well before you knew me. I owe a lot to Chase, not only for the knowledge that he's given me, but for the welcoming, open arm reception that he's given me when I came to the community. Um, you know, there was there were a lot of people that were quote unquote fans of my content, but they didn't want to engage with me, and I knew it. I knew it. I'm you know I'm not I'm not I'm very self aware. It, if there's a bigger critic on himself it's no big there's no bigger critic than myself so i may criticize things and say oh man i gotta do this better or whatever i don't i don't i'm not prideful like that at the same time i know where my limitations are you know what i'm saying i, I know where i just I, i'm just not capable of doing anymore i'm okay with that i know how to play with the cards that i've been dealt you know what i'm saying I, it's been like that since life so when people didn't want to engage with me you know what i'm saying I understood why. I'm very loud, bombastic. I get to the point. I cut. I cut to the meat and potatoes of the subject matter. While people was trying to play the clarinet on the mic and be all nice about it, I'm like, you know, rah rah, you know, like a dungeon dragon out this piece, calling out um, Tom Warren, calling out Paul Tassie. You know what I'm saying? Telling us to go to arms. You feel me? Telling us to gather our arms and fight back. Fight back the idiot herd out here in social media. And we started doing it. And it was a wonderful thing. It's been a, it's been good. Like when I said put do that fight. And y'all answered the call. It was what's needed. Because they literally thought that nobody was playing this platform. That's what they thought. They thought nobody was playing Stadia. And they thought that I was the only demented fool out here. And I don't mind what they think, you know, because I'll battle everybody. That's just how I am. But they thought that I was the only demented fool out here that like stated. They didn't realize it was a community because what y'all do, y'all got like the people in us. Y'all went into the underground caverns and was was eating raw chickens or rabbits. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Was afraid to come out. And I, I, you know, we had to crack open the door and say, come on out, y'all. So, man, it's time to play. They had to know that we was here. We was in the house. And now they know we in the house. They they first was calling you my goons. And I was like, no, nah, these, these ain't my goons. This is this is awakened beast. This is, has been an awakened beast. And again, we had to do that when the community was bucking back at us and said, not, and when I say the community, not everybody, but there were entities in the community that said, it ain't worth it. It ain't worth responding to people. Just leave them alone. Who cares? Not understanding that it's a mind share game. Like the we have the luxury of not everybody knowing what Stadia is right now. Like I would say over 90% of the gaming population have no idea what the hell a Stadia is. They may have seen it, but they don't know what it does. They may know it has something to do with gaming, but they don't know that. They know nothing. But it's not going to always be like that. And there's going to come a time to when Stadia is going to get more popular. People are going to do research on it. And then if the, if the research that they do is filled with negative noise. And it didn't have to be that way because all we had to do was open our mouths and fight back with contrasting views and real life experience opposed to their bibble babble. But if the ethos is filled with all that negative noise, it's done. It's a done for it's done for. Stick a knife in her. Stick a fork in her. She's done. Okay? So that's why I said it's important to at least have some fight back. Now people are actually apprehensive. And I know it because the people around me are apprehensive. Now people are apprehensive about being negative on status. Sometimes when they feeling bold and brass, they got on their favorite cologne or, or, or their favorite heels. They, they might think I'm a go there, but they know that the potential that MM2K... Or any of the goons being on their neck is going to happen. And some of them say, you know what? I don't even want to talk about it. 
Don't even want to talk about it in DMs now. That's how that's that's how bad we made it for him, and that's the way it should be. Because a lot of these idiots are talking from a place of non-exposure, meaning they haven't even touched the platform, but they're going off of another grown man's misconceptions or misguided views on something. And that's why I call those people the idiot herd. They just want to belong. I don't know what ill wills they suffer through in life socially, but they get they they turn on the computer, they sit in front of their keyboard, eating their Cheez-Its or getting Pop-Tart crumbs all between the letter N and M and the semicolons, and then they just start tippy topping to belong. I had somebody tell me today, just going back and forth with it with Stadia, that I'd rather listen to Tom Ward opposed to doing my own due diligence. Tom, Tom Ward is one of those people you got to explain to him why water is wet. He, he just fell into, and, and God bless him, but he just fell into, into the situation he's in as far as his job is concerned. He took the right courses, knew the right people, because my brother is not it because he ain't got it. He put the capital D at D-U-M-B. But I love him though. I got my flaws too. I didn't say I was always the sharpest pencil on the ball. But I'm just keeping it real with you. Because for someone to be at the levels that they're at, to have the access that they have, for them to not be able to comprehend or absorb stuff that's just right in front of them. Like, it's one thing if you got an agenda. It's very clear if you got an agenda. Like, Yong Ye's not dumb. He just has an agenda. It's not that he's stupid. We, we know Yong Ye ain't stupid. Can't call him that. He's just sl he's, he's slicker than snake oil. Okay. But someone like a Paul... Uh, uh, well, I almost... They, they like the two in the same. But Tom Warren and God forbid... I hate saying this. I love Paul Taz. He seems like a nice guy, but... Bless his heart. You know, like my grandma used to say, bless his heart. They say stuff that's so dumb, and they, but they mean it. And it's like, just look over there. How did you miss all that? Just look right the answers right there. Why would you say something so stupid? But that's the, that, that's the ebb and flow with people like that. So what we wanted to do was press back Make sure, because they have loud, you know, uh, uh, speaker blasts when it comes to the, their outreach, you know? So we, we, we got to press back to at least have some type of alternative source that people can go to and say, oh, well, hold on, Tom Warren, this guy only plays Destiny an X amount of time on it, but these people play it thoroughly. They got videos, this whole community, Sadia, Super Saturday, all other stuff, and they're pressing back. You know what I'm saying? So with all that being said, what did, what, what did I mean by all that? I meant that even though there was a difference of opinion in the community on how we should handle, you know, whether to fight back or not, our stance was, hey, look, I'm not going to tell you how to do your thing. You don't tell me how to do mine. Okay? If y'all want to sit there on the mic and play the clarinet, you know what I'm saying? Like y'all auditioning for Jay Leno, so be it. God bless you. A lot of people love that stuff. And those type of formats give people a lot of information. So I love it. If you like it, I love it. But me here in the trenches, trying to keep the viability of the platform rolling, because without mind sharing product placement, it goes nowhere. But me out here in the trenches, you gotta show me, you know, you let me do my thing. You ain't gotta love, you ain't gotta like it, love you. Anyway. Really, you ain't even gotta show me my respect. When I say you ain't gotta show me my respect, I mean, you ain't gotta shot me out. But understand, I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do. Everything has a place in this ethos, okay? So why did I say all that? Well, my brother Chase, someone that I talk to regularly, someone that welcomed me when a lot of you wouldn't, I didn't know if y'all should even deal with me. Chase came with open arms and said, brother, come here, man. I'm going to rap to you. I got this show called Stadia Talk. Hop on, the hop on the joint. Let me rap to you, good man. You know, we'll get you some exposure, all that stuff, right? 
and then the rest is history. You know what I'm saying? So that that is my brother. I talk to him all the time. I tell y'all all the time, me and him have deep conversations. Me and him don't always agree on things, but but that's, you know, who, do you always agree with your friends? Like, don't put this mystique on us because we're content providers and we were, some of y'all may feel we were brave enough to go in front of the camera. Well, except in my case, but brave enough to go in front of the mic or the camera. Don't think that we're not, we still don't bleed red, you know, underneath all this. Just like how I don't agree with him and he'd be like, hold on him. I mean, he don't agree with me. Hold on him, him, X, Y, Z. You know, it, it might be vice versa. With that being said, that's still my brother because as far as he's he's all he's looking out for me, and as far as I'm concerned, he has great intentions, man. And 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 I reciprocate that. Now, my way of reciprocating that is when I'm dealing with my brothers, is I don't like when people twist their words out of context. I don't like it. I don't. So here's what happened. My bro Chase has been getting on the mic. He's been getting on the horn. And he's been saying things to the nature of, look, man, I'm concerned about this. From a business lens, from his business lens, I don't know if they're making the right moves. Now, have I always, now have I agreed with that sentiment most recently? No, but it's his platform. It's his right. Yeah, and I think he's earned it to be able to, to express himself. And there are those within the community that feel the same way. Just like when Doom Eternal had the 4K 60, the non-native 4K 60 issue, and I was on one side of the fence and Chase was on the other, it, it was still all love. But now, if you have a difference of, a, of opinion, People want to attack you. And that's not cool. Because I'm telling you, even though I, I I don't necessarily align with where he's coming from wholeheartedly, I personally agree that I don't like the direction of the communication. But if it's working, then hey, fine by me, because personally, I'm happy. I'm not going to complain. So if if Donnie from PSVG said that he liked that connect, even though me and my brother Chase thought it was trash, then I'm going to shut the hell up. Because <laughs> I thought it was trash mainly because of the communication. But if somehow it just skipped me and I just can't understand it, and, it, and, and Donnie, who, if you get someone like Donnie, then you in a good spot. You see what I'm saying? If Donnie liked what he was being presented with, then I'm going to shut up because I'm here regardless. I'm here regardless. I'm happy. I'm here. So I'm not going to sit there and cry over spilled milk and, and, and tell Donnie, well, you're wrong or whatever. You know what I'm saying? No. If they can retain an MM2K, which they're doing, and they can make Donnie happy and possibly get him thinking about coming back to the platform, that's where we want them to be. So I'm going to shut up. But that's me. If I wanted to be vocal about it, like Chase, then that's Chase's right. I think he's earned that right. But where we've come to is people can't express their opinions on their platforms. And if even if you think the message is no longer something that you can agree with, then just leave. Just leave. Don't try to opinion shame people. But that's what's been going on. And it's been getting bad. It's really been getting bad that people are being opinion shamed. So you take the opinion shaming and then you take the fact that overall he might feel, you know what, you know what I'm saying? People just ain't digging my message. You know what I'm saying? At Maybe at the scope that I, I, I may have thought they were or it just ain't worth it maybe they are maybe there's still a good plethora of people that are digging my message but i'm getting so much attack i need personal time i'm trying to he told y'all he's dealing he, he, he trying to he's trying to you know do some life balance stuff he told y'all this that's why he stepped away in the first place 
And, you know, is it, st is it still worth by me trying to do this life balance stuff? Is it still worth me engaging in this way, in this platform, and, and such intimate, and so, so intimately with y'all? Is it worth me engaging so intimately with y'all? If y'all throwing spears and darts like this? Now, MM2K is going to throw blows to the white meat. Until you don't see nothing but white meat on the knuckles. That's me. Chase is like, no. I mean, you know, hey, look, man. I'm not going to I'm not going to battle with anybody. If, 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 if the volume in the room is getting so loud, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, it's gotten to the point to where, you know, you, you, you can feel the tension. It was like, you know, shut up. You know, shut up. You don't don't say that. Like, stay there. Says, you know, stay there. Came, came with the twelve wise men and, and went to go meet Jesus and gave him the gifts. That that's that's, you know, it was it, it was a it was a vitriol to say shut up, opposed to saying look, man, I don't agree with that. So because I don't agree with that, I might have to step away from your channel. Instead of that, it's like we don't even want your channel to exist. To even reverberate this stuff. It wasn't the former. It was the latter. Had it been the former. Then my bro would have had to make a decision. You know what? People are leaving the platform. I don't care. I still feel the same way that I do. Or people are leaving the platform. Let me let me try. Let me try maybe not focusing on XYZ. But focusing on ABC. You know what I'm saying? Wh wh whatever. But it all would have been cordial. But that's not what happened. So because that's not what happened, he made the decision to step away. And I'm and, and as his brother, I'm asking y'all, because like he says himself, the community ain't based on one person. Please let the brother be in peace. Let him be in peace. Let him spend time with his wife. Because happy wife, happy life. Let the brother be in peace. Do not use him. Now, this is where I'm getting agitated. Do not use him to, 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 to serve some self-fulfilling agenda where we're running, uh, running around all of uh, the, the internet ethos screaming like, who was, was that Paul Bunyan? The British is coming. The British is coming. Stadium's collapsing. Stadium's collapsing. No. He told y'all all the time, I'm one person. Now I get it. That one person was heavily cherished in the stadium community. We called him the Godfather. He's like, man, I don't want that moniker, man. Stop it, stop it. And he probably thinking to himself right now, I really wish I wouldn't have done that. Because y'all done put me in some stuff <laughs> that I really ain't want to be into. But you know, we was calling him the Godfather. You know what I mean? So I get it. A lot of, when, when, seeing Chase roll. In this fashion, I get it. It's, it's a shock. It's like, wow. Like when I found out about it, I'm like, wow. I ain't going to front. I even tried to, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not going to tell you me and my brother's convo, but I will say that I did try to convince him otherwise. I did. I did. I know that even I look when I look at things, I look at things bigger than myself. I look at it from 5,000 feet. I know that my brother has a following that agrees wholeheartedly with him. Whether they're a minority or not, we don't know. They could be a silent minority. Who knows? But he still has people to follow him. Why? Because I see the same sentiments echo that he's echoing when I send out my tweets. I feel you on that, MM2K, but I don't agree with this. What about bang, gang, 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 gang? When we was doing the show yesterday, Yo, what about bang, 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 bang? You know what I'm saying? So he has a following, and I was trying to explain that to him. But again, if you're in a vacuum where gradually people are trying to smother your voice, and they're not only saying, look, man, I can't rock out with the channel anymore because I'm coming from a different perspective, and that's still right. They're not just saying that. They're saying, shut the hell up. We don't want you anywhere saying this. 
then that was a problem for my brother. And he stepped away. That's an issue that he has with the community discourse. That's not so much an issue that he has with the platform. And he told y'all over and over and over and over and over again in his two hour video multiple times that his issue personally ain't with the platform. He just has so not so nice things to say about the messaging and the, and the direction pointing that he feels vocal about. And he wants to he wanted to he wanted to vocalize it and put it out there for food for thought for us to discuss. And the community, as far as he's concerned, was very sharp in their delivery. We don't want to hear that right now. So he said, okay, if you don't want to hear it, then I won't say it. I'm closing down the studio. <laughs> I'm shutting down. Look, you, you, you know what I'm saying? But I don't understand some of y'all. Some This is why I got to give y'all the tough love. I don't understand some of y'all sometimes. Y'all tell the man to shut up. And when he shuts up, you say, oh my God, it's all over. Again, y'all tell the man to shut up. And when he shuts up, y'all say, oh my God, it's all over. I don't look, man. Y'all got to take a look in the mirror. And y'all got to figure this one out. What's it going to be? Do you think that the growth of the platform is based upon people just focusing on the positivity or is it based on there being a bunch of content creators? Again, I'm going to pose the question to you. You look in the mirror, write this down if you got to. I'll, I'll shut up so you can get the pencil and paper. I don't shut up for too long. I can't help it. But you catch my drift. Write it down. Put it in your tablet, your phone or whatever. Ask yourself this question. Is the community success based upon A, people, content creators, whatever, and showing that in totality they're, they're positive about the platform or B, how many people there are liking the, how many content creators there are um, liking the platform? Because you can't have both. Do you either want everybody to be on the bandwagon or do you want a bunch of content creators with a plethora and a diversity of thought? You can't have both. And that's what agitates me. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm 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 in happy life, happy wife, happy life mode. It's a lot of things, my, you know what I'm saying? I got to take care of them for my wife and then my kids and all this other stuff, right? So I had stepped away. I didn't even get to see my brother's show. I didn't even get it to see it until 5 a.m. on Friday after I dropped my wife off at work. I didn't get to see it until then. I had no comments because I wanted to wait and watch it to see, God dang, did my brother bring out the, the Tommy gun and, and, and mow Stadia down? I didn't know what he said. I had a pre-conversation with him. I let him know that I was supporting no matter what he decided. And I let him do his thing. I had to take care of things with the wifey and the kids. And I said, I'll get back to this later. As I'm preparing for bed, because I didn't think it was going to be, I thought it was it was going to be like a, a parting. Okay, look, guys, I'm you know what I'm saying? I thought it was going to be very clear to the to the community what my bro was saying. So I said, I got to rest on it and I'll check it out in the morning. And as I'm getting ready for bed, because I got to get up early in the morning. My wife, I mean, not my wife. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, my wife said, your phone is buzzing like crazy. Like, what? So I'm looking at my phone and Muggs is going off. Man, the community is dead, is dying. Oh my gosh, the flesh wounds. Oh, skin is boiling off the back. I'm hearing all this. I said, so I responded to one person. I said, well, what the hell is going on? What did I miss? And I'm thinking that maybe Google shut down something. Or 
or Xbox made an announcement that was more def more finite than the xCloud one. I'll get into that. I thought something or or a major figure came out and spread some doubt on Xbox. I mean on on Stadia because of the Xbox. I thought something of that that ELE that extreme level event happened. But what was it? It was simply my brother telling you, look, y'all, y'all want me to shut up? I'm going to shut up. That's basically what he told y'all. He said, look, if y'all want me to shut up so much, I'll shut up. I'll be there for twos. I'll be there for uh, TSI. But besides that, maybe I'll do a game stream or two. That, that's it. That's it. That's all you're getting from me. Y'all want me to shut up? I'm going to shut up. That's a, that's essentially what he said, and y'all took it and and that's a, and that is a response to the community more than it was the platform. As far as the platform is concerned, it's still his platform of choice. He said, "I per, I personally still love the platform. I just feel that they're making the wrong decision, and I feel vocal about that. And and and, 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 and you can't move me on this right now." So if you're going to ask me, this is what I got to say. And y'all told him to shut up. So he shut up. I want to swear so bad. <laughs> y'all don't know. I want to curse y'all out right now. I really do. Look in the mirror and ask yourself a question. Hey, is this platform in the community going to be built off people being on the bandwagon or B? Is it going to be built off of a diversity of thought? Because you can't have both. Y'all wanted the man to shut up. He said, fine. I'm going to step back. Now y'all are, I, I don't get it. I want to curse y'all so bad. I love y'all like the children I never paid child support for. I love y'all. But y'all really done effed up this time. Y'all effed up. And it just shows you. It shows you. That. You now. Are exhibiting. The toxic behavior. I hate using that word. I hate using. Because it's one of them finger wagging words. But you're exhibiting. The true toxic behavior. Of a community. That may be on a downward spiral. Now I know I just said 24 hours earlier. The community is fantastic. The community is great. But there are certain elements within this community. That's, that, that's have this. That's in this bipolar state. Chase shut up. Oh no Chase is leaving. It's all over. Like my brother said. He's one person. I We, we all get it. I'm a missing. I tried to convince him not to go. But he told y'all that as far as his particular voice is concerned, he's not, he don't feel that he's, he don't feel that he's welcome. As far as his voice is concerned, because he feels a particular type of way. And it seems like that people are telling him, shut up. So he said, fine, I'm shutting up. Now here's, now I never talked to him about this, but here's maybe something y'all can, y'all can suggest. For those of you that feel like Chase and that want, want to hear Chase's take, if you're a Patreon supporter of the, this week on Stadia Unfiltered, maybe lobby Chase to do Chase State, you know, do Stadia Talk only via the Two's Patreon. And that way he ain't got to worry about y'all on the ethos that are in a bipolar state of mind right now. And I don't say that lightly. I'm not making fun of mental disease. Like I told y'all, I, I, look, my, my children deal with it. I know I've got it. I got something. I just ain't been diagnosed. I just dealt with it. You know what I'm saying? But I'm saying, but on the real, that's the best way I can describe it. It's very bipolar in nature. So, be, but so because he ain't got to deal with that, that state of mind in the community, 
or that crevice within the community. He can say what he wants to say at ease and he can do it within the the two's Patreon. And if you really want to, if you really want to hear what my brother has to say, you could go to be, be, be a Patreon member. You can still hear him there. And then maybe he can build a community within that that does appreciate what he says. And if y'all don't appreciate what he says, you're not going to waste the time and argue with him behind the Patreon. You can't. All you're going to do is like, well, I don't I don't want to listen to that stuff anymore. I just won't listen to those excerpts anymore. But again, y'all got to make a decision. Do y'all want people that fully jump on the bandwagon? Or do you want a diverse community? Because here's my thing. Yes. Am I, I don't want to say I'm siding with, but do I, do I sympathize right now more with the, the group that says, look, let's not overshoot the moon on this product. It's still in the building phase. Some of the expectations that we had during the connect may have been off base. Maybe, you know, you know, maybe we Google overhyped this, but maybe we did add to the overhype a little bit. Let's pull back a little bit and not expect too much because honestly, again, my original score was based upon my, and I gave it a 4.5 out of 10, but my original score was based off the, I, what I thought was the, was the sure to be reaction from it. I thought it was trash. I still think it was trash. I thought it was trash. And I thought the community was going to get ripped a whole back like it was November for it. That's what I thought. Because it's circling around all these big events from PlayStation and Xbox. And I figured that people would make the false equivalency to what PlayStation and Xbox is showing. They were like, this is not on the same caliber of what they're showing. This is trash. And they were going to eat it alive. And it didn't happen that way. As time went on, it balanced out to where it was like 50-50. You know, 50 liked what they saw. 50% had negative stuff to say. I don't even think that 50 that had negative stuff to say. I don't even think the majority of them even saw. They just, they're just they just running on the anti-stadia bandwagon as always. But even at that, it's never been 50-50 as far as positive news about stadia. And I think a lot of it had to do with the positive press. The press overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly was positive about what Stadia presented. It was, it was, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that I was looking at the same press. So with that being said, and even in the advent of this whole xCloud thing that I'm going to talk about, you have a lot of, Individual voices that are saying things like xCloud murder Stadia and Stadia is going to die tomorrow and all this silly stuff. But you don't hear the press destroying Stadia like they normally would. Because they get it. I think they're starting to get it. They've been playing it and now they get it. So... That's what I wanted to say about the first part. The first part, I just simply wanted to say, community, y'all got to get it together. Y'all got to figure it out. Do y'all want y'all? Do y'all want the bandwagon party, or do you want a diversity of thought? If you want diversity of thought, then at worst, when a content creator is not spitting the math that you want to hear. Then you just go into another room. Oh, I can't listen to Chase's stuff right now. What you know what I'm saying? And y'all pull back, and then he'll see the numbers, and then he'll make a decision. It might still be the same decision. But what you can't do is you can't be shocked if you're throwing daggers and darts and spears at the brother. Y'all wanted him to shut up, so we shut up. What's it going to be? And then lastly, to echo his sentiment. And again, I'm, I, I get it. I get it. And I think my brother would approve of this message finally so we can move on and go to the next thing. I wholeheartedly get it that Chase is going to be missed. Chase is beloved in this community despite whether people disagree with him or not now. And Chase is a, 
is a pillar or was, you know, depending upon if he's going to make this official official and never come back. Chase was a pillar, is a pillar of this community. But like he even says, he's not the only content creator. MM2K is not the only content creator. Shout out to the homie, um, 6-4, who does side on the, you know, on, you know, look, man, I, I see the more positive regards about this. Project Storm. You know what I mean? I see the more positive regards about this. And then even the homie Sonny, though, on the flip side of that. Sonny's a great content creator. He ain't he, he ain't digging this so much. Andy Morphs, another great content creator. He's not digging it so much. And my homie Rav, I'm not sure where Rav stands on this. I haven't had a chance to really chat with Rav. But you know what I'm saying? But that's just another. We have so many great content creators that it's not fair to them that just because my brother said to you, to y'all, not to the platform, he said to y'all, oh, y'all want me to shut up? I'm going to shut up. Y'all want to then rub it, take it, uh, uh, advert it from your shoulders. You want to deflect and then make it about the platform. No, he said to you. Y'all are not accepting of what I got to say. He didn't say it apply for. He said of you. It's a disrespect to the other content creators to say because he was talking to y'all that the rest of y'all, it's about to die. Close up shop, y'all. It's about to burn. That's ridiculous to me. And y'all need to really look at the mirror. Just stare at the mirror. Just stare at it for hours and hours and hours. Then after you stare at it and the sun starts to set a little bit, then ask yourself, what is it going to be? Is it going to be a bandwagon of fear or diversity of thought? If we want bandwagon of fear and, the, and, and my brother wants to step back from that, then that's what you let it be. But do not take a message that was centrifuge towards y'all that wanted him to shut up for him to actually oblige and then y'all turn it into something else. It's ridiculous to me. So with that, again, let my brother rest in peace as far as, and I, when I say rest in peace, let him relax in peace. Let me say that rather. I don't, I don't want to put no bad omen on my brother. Let my brother relax in peace. Enjoy his family time with his wife. Y'all will see him every Tuesday on this week on Stadia Unfiltered. You will see him every other Friday on TSI Podcast. If you feel like doing a game stream, you will see him on the game stream. And lastly, if you do still want to hear from Chase, I mean, I'm going to ask to have him on the show if he'll come. But even at that, if you want more of Chase, then maybe, you know, rock out and suggest, hey, bro, maybe... If the people out on the ethos is being toxic to, you know what I'm saying, and not showing no love, maybe do some 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 TWOS unfiltered Patreon content. I would I, I would love to hear you behind the scenes. Hey, I would pay for it, or I'm already a member. That would be something extra. And then maybe what he could do is he could do Stadia Talk Patreon. You know what I'm saying, and do it within the TWOS Patreon. Okay. So that's that, man. We we just got to get better. And I don't, I y'all y'all are too conflicting with this. Y'all are pivoting off your emotions, and there's too much of it right now. And I'll just say this: I come from the crumb side. I've seen toxicity, quote unquote, that you wouldn't believe. Your mouth would your your teeth your mouth would drop to the jaw, and your teeth would fall out if I shared some of these stories with you. But one thing that I can tell you is that what those content creators do. And the community does is that as soon as there's some information, they collaborate, they get together to help each other grow. So if the crumb side people can do it, I think we can do it too. All right. Period. That's it on that. All right. So the next thing I want to talk about is this whole X cloud thing, right? You know what I'm saying? This whole X Cloud thing. Um, let me do this. Let's see if I can find 
uh, what is that? Is that web? No, that's the wrong one. What? Oh, that's the wrong web display. Let's do it like this. Oh, dangly golly. Okay. Maybe I'll do it like this. Hold on. Hold on, y'all. Bear with me. Bear with a brother. Bear with a brother. Exit that. Let's put this over here. All right, now let's share it. Or let's present it. And let's go back to slide one. All right. And now let's go back to here. All right, y'all. So here's the deal. Xbox the other day announced that they are going to bundle xCloud in with Game Pass. Now, for those of you that don't that live under a rock and don't know what Xbox and, and, and xCloud is, and Game Pass is, let me explain real quick. xCloud is Xbox answer to game streaming. So what they do is they have Xboxes in, on server blades in the cloud that are going to transmit games to you at home, kind of like what Google does with Stadia. That's their answer to game streaming. Game Pass, excuse me, Game Pass is Xbox answer to um, the subscription service. So if you like a subscription service, and you don't want to pay full price for games, but for ten dollars or fifteen dollars, whatever the case may be, you want to have a plethora. You want to have access to a plethora of games. X Xbox has a rotating library of a hundred games or hundred plus games that they put in, in Game Pass that you could try out, and, and you can, and that can be your catalog of games if you want to. Um. So, what I'm saying to y'all is that. Those are two totally different services that have been merged together, though. They have been merged together, right? And when I say they've been merged together, they're, you know, if you want, if, if you want xCloud, the most feasible way to get it is through Game Pass. Now, I think xCloud standalone would be 10, would probably be $9.99, you know, um, but that is if there is going to be a standalone X Cloud. Um, X Cloud might, you know, and then here, here here's how it works. X Cloud is going to be nine ninety nine probably. If you want a standalone Xbox Live is still going to be ten dollars standalone if you want it, and then. Um, Xbox Game Pass, there's a $10 version of that, or you can get all three for $15.99. Okay. So if that's a if that's an alluring proposition for you as a console gamer, and I'm gonna explain that. If that's an alluring proposition for you as a console gamer, then yes. Get off, get all three together for fifteen ninety nine, or fourteen ninety nine. Because here's the thing, here's what we're hearing, we're hearing that X Cloud, now doing this with Game Pass, renders Stadia dead. And I want to show y'all something first before we get into that garbage. So, here's a tweet. I've been having a friendly back and forth. I've been having a lot of back and forths. All of them not friendly. But this one with the homie Cell, he's a he's a cool dude. Um, Cell twenty one oh nine, Cell double E, he's a good guy. Um, we've been having a friendly back and forth, um, and he has his impression. But what I can tell you about Cell is that is it's clear to me that Cell is not really familiar with the demographic of the cloud gamer. So here's what I have to tell Cell. Let me see if I can find my other replies. Uh-uh. Uh-oh. I got to find this one reply that encapsulated everything that I was saying to Cell perfectly. I just got to find it. Okay. So Cell says... Hold on. 
Oh man, if I can find it. There it goes. Okay. So Cell says, yes, I understand xCloud doesn't match to perform. Well, so let, let, let me start off with, with the whole chain. He says, Moss, I told you a few months ago that xCloud is going to destroy Stadia. Especially once the performance improves for multiple reasons. He says this. Um... Stadia business model didn't make sense. Xbox is combining Game Pass with xCloud. You don't have to pay full price for games. So I responded to him. I said, so if you don't understand the cloud gaming demographic, that makes sense to you. But xCloud is only at 720p. It's only on phones and tablets. It has the worst performance out of all the cloud services. If I want a cost efficient, top notch, gaming that's ultra cheap why would i pick xcloud at all apologies for that i live by a hospital so they are they're always air flighting people to the hospital so then he says yes i understand that xcloud doesn't match the performance or resolution of stadia yet but eventually it will and what it does it will be a better option simply because of the business model. Even when Stadia gets games, you have to pay full price for the games on top of a sub. And I said, nope. This is where, again, the homie sell just doesn't have all the right information in the right buckets. And that's because the internet has failed him. The internet and these podcasters and these content creators, they're liars and they have failed him. I don't blame him for this. This is their fault. So... I said to him, I said, nope, depends on the value proposition. Is it money or volume? If I'm a cloud gamer, no daddy device, here's my options between the two, really. Stadia, I buy games outright, no subscription needed. Or $10 a month for an ever-growing library of games that I get to keep. xCloud, I want to buy a game outright. $15 still needed plus $15 a month for a hundred games that you rent. If I didn't want to buy a game outright, if I even just was relying on the subscription service, then I get a hundred, I get a hundred rotating games, which is a lot of games, but I have to pay that $15 a month to get the rotating games. And I even don't, and I don't get to keep them. So let's just say if I have a couple of games in game pass, that I like because I'm not going to like all 100. A lot of that is fluff. See, that's this is the problem that people don't realize. It. A lot of the stuff that's in these subscription services are fluff. But the fact is, is that they're reeling you in by just throwing a whole bunch of stuff at you. It's like Country and Buffet or Golden Corral. Excuse me. Let me get into the, the 21st century. It's like Golden Corral. With Golden Corral, yeah, you get 60 dishes, but 59 of them all smell like cauliflower. It tastes like cauliflower too. There may be that one, two, three dishes that you really like that you keep going back to. Even though there's, there's 50 places you can go and go and corral and, and get food because it's a buffet. For those that don't live in the States, don't know what the hell I'm talking about. There might in general be only four or five things that you go to, right? Oh, the chicken is good. The, the bourbon chicken is that. You, you ain't going to touch all 50 of them. But because it's a buffet, you think you're getting a deal. And that's the allure that services like Game Pass is trying to pass over to you. Here's what Google is doing instead, which at first didn't seem like a better value. But for me, and I believe a lot of other gamers, might be the better route. You are giving me quality, uh, like two or three, sometimes even up to five, quality games a month. Free that I get to keep. All I got to do is keep subscribing to the thing. And even when I don't subscribe, I still keep those games if I go back. If I go back and I, and I rejoin the subscription model, but I get to keep those games. It's not a, Xbox doesn't have the power to say, oh, no, nope, you don't have access to that game anymore. Oh, no. Nope. So in a scenario and this happened to me, this is why I'm, I'm 
I, I did renew one month of Game Pass. They got me. I said I wasn't going to renew it. I thought my Game Pass didn't run out till August. It ran out in July, y'all. And it, it was it auto hit me, and it was nothing I could do about it. But this is why I'm canceling in August. Um, here's the problem with Game Pass. So in Game Pass, there might be about two or three games that you like. So way back when, when I was still playing my Xbox, I don't even touch my Xbox now, but way back when, when I was playing my Xbox, I said, huh, let me, I'm going to download Gears 5, and I'm going to download a couple other games. So Gears 5 and like one or two other games I was playing. The third game that I downloaded, and I had it off the Game Pass Ultimate. I said, oh, I want to get back to this game. I said, as soon as I get done with Gears 5, I'm going to play this game. It had to be like maybe a month, a month and a half. The game was gone. The game was gone. And I said, what? I said, I didn't hardly, I didn't hardly go through, you know, I really wanted to play that game, but I figured it would be there for a while. No, the game was gone. But with Stadia, the, the pro subscription, which I prefer better, once I claim the game, as long as I'm still paying for the service, I get to keep access to the game. Stadia will never yank that game from me. I'm always going to have access to it. So I don't feel like I'm rushed. I got to run through games. Oh, I got to hurry up, hurry up. Oh, country by fat. I want to eat 12 dishes. Oh, I don't, I'm not forced to just rush through stuff. And that's what Xbox is doing. It's just what Game Pass is, you know, there is no de facto content in there. Like there even is a Netflix. Netflix, you go watch Dark or you go watch uh, Stranger Things or whatever else might be on Netflix. Xbox don't have that. I mean, Halo is going to really be the first game that's going to really, really make people the, the hardcore brass or, or the or the or the gate mind share. Um, gamers that xbox needs to get back i mean yes sea of thieves is on there but sea of thieves is like a destiny it had it does have a huge following but it's only a select type of people it's not for everybody it is not for everybody so i and i didn't come to xbox for no damn sea of thieves and i come to xbox for no god dag on crackdown okay or well, crackdown three at that crackdown one and, and possibly even two at their times were fine because they you know that, that's where that was where, around where the apex of gaming was now we're we're years away from that and you don't give me a, a, a sharper red skin of that style of game that's just nuts nah, not gonna fly with that said um that is a better value proposition to me for someone like myself maybe not everybody maybe people want volume but if I don't want it, ten nine ninety nine is cool with me. Fourteen ninety nine, yeah, for for a bunch of games I'm not gonna play. I'm not cool with that. And let's just say I don't want. What if one day I say, you know what? I just want to play. I just want to play Stadia as is, ten eighty p sixty. You know what I'm saying? I don't need four K. And the latest game come out and I'll just and I want to play the latest game and I don't all I just want to do is pay the price of the game I'm get, I, I gotta I gotta pay the, the the game pass ultimate tax of $15 well with stadia I could just pay the price of the game so again if I'm a cloud gamer if I'm gaming solely on the cloud which we're a growing group. We're an ever-growing group. xCloud does nothing for me as far as value proposition because I got, I'm, I got this paywall in order to access the games anyway. There is no such paywall with Stadia. All right? So I explained to the good brother Cell and I, I told him, I said, you know, you could buy the game outright with no subscriptions of dollars a month, forever growing library of games you keep. X, X Cloud, you gotta buy games outright. $15 still needed to buy the game outright. $50 a month for the $100 for the 100 games in circulation that you rent. 
And I also added, so with that said, I just want to game cheap. If I just want to game cheaply via the cloud and all I buy is Madden, Call of Duty and 2K a year, what is the best proposition value proposition for me? Only pay an additional $10 a month if if I must have 4K gaming and extra games or forced to pay $15 a month just to access the platform. So he responded, he said, with xCloud, you don't have to buy the games outright because the games you want are already in Game Pass. Having hundreds of games available for $15 a month is more valuable, in my opinion. I said, look, cloud gamers like the same games. They just prefer a more cost-efficient, mobile, and convenient way to play them. If I'm the average consumer and I just want Madden or Call of Duty and I'm solely relying on Game Pass, then no. Am I, or am I solely re relying on Game Pass? No. Most hardcore gamers buy at launch. Hence why Game Pass is only at 33% adoption rate at best. So here's something that we're losing sight of, sight of, people. We're talking all this stuff about Game Pass. Like, Game Pass is the greatest thing ever. No, it's the greatest thing. Y'all gotta, gotta separate the water cooler talk from the actual mindshare product placement talk. The water cooler talk surrounding Game Pass, and oh, Game Pass is a great deal. It's excellent. Oh, Game Pass and our Xbox is that's clouded. But if Game Pass was such a fantastic deal for all gaming consumers, then riddle me this. Why only 30%, 33% of Xbox gamers themselves only have Game Pass? Only 33% of Xbox gamers themselves have Game Pass. There are about 50 to 60 million consoles out there. There are about 10 to 20 million Game Pass subscriptions. Game Pass is such a great deal, but again, at best, 33% of the gaming population has access to it. It's xCloud is great water cooler talk. But the people that are trying to convince you that xCloud is so much better than everything else, they likely don't even have it. Look to your left. If you got game, pretty much, if you got game pass, look to your left, look to your right. None of those people got game pass. That's what that 33% mean. Let's do that exercise again. If you got Game Pass, look to your left, look to your right. Ain't none of those people got Game Pass. So we gotta stop falling into the ethos for this uh, for, for this water cooler talk. Because a lot of the people that are saying death to X Cloud or whatever, they're not playing X. Let me give you an example. Paul Tassie. Paul Tassie is full of garbage. Paul Tassie plays Destiny on Stadia. He plays it regularly. He is not going to play Destiny on xCloud for the foreseeable future until xCloud gets on PCs or laptops. Right now it's on phones and tablets. Paul Tassie is not playing Destiny on his phone primarily. If he plays Destiny when he's away from his tube, he's playing it on a laptop. He may tinker with it on the phone, but he's going to play on the laptop. And the way that it performs on xCloud, being that Paul Tassi is a PC dude, he games on PC. Bro is not, hey man, he's not messing with it. Do not fall for the okie doke, even Paul Tassi, because it gets him clicks. It's entertaining water cooler talk. It's the thing to talk about. It's like when, when, when Game of Thrones first came out. And you know how you be talking about Game of Thrones? You watch it, oh yeah. The sister burnt down the tower. Oh man, that was... And you got people surrounding you and they're holding their water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you see that part? Oh no, I ain't watched Game of Thrones yet, but I'm going to watch it. They just want to be part of the discussion. And y'all got to stop falling for the okie doke. Y'all fall for it all the damn time. 
But I look like the hater out here with the tweets. I want to show y'all something. I already got it here. All right. So here's the thing, y'all. This is the presentation. In my presentation, I did this months ago. The focus was the different platforms that I tested gaming, uh, cloud gaming on. All right. In the areas of discussion, which are important to, to the cloud gaming demo. Hold on one second. Let me, blow, let me blow my nose. Hold on one second. Okay, I'm back. Okay, so the so the main modules that are important for the cloud gaming or gaming or performance, um, post performance, product placement. You know what I'm saying? And overall, well, I'm sorry. These are the areas of my discussion. And what I and what I mean by post episode performance is later on we are going to talk. We are going to talk about all of every all of them all of their performance once they all hit retail i'm just waiting for x cloud to hit retail but i was looking at all these while they were either in retail or they were at the earliest stages of launch you know what i'm saying because um project stream was not what was like in the back of my mind you know what i'm saying at this point in time all right so the ecosystems out of network. What is out of network ecosystems this is one of the things that we tested. Gaming software is solely cloud based and the service allows you to play out of the network from where the gaming application is stored. Meaning if you're playing, if, 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 it, if it's if it's streaming the game from your even from your console, then you can go down to the laundromat and get out of your local network and play the game. OK, that's what out of network. So, you know, of course, you had Google Stadia and all that other stuff, you know. So this was earlier on. This is before I think I think I did this before I got Stadia in my hands. Yes, I did. I did this before I got Stadia in my hands. I was basing Stadia off of Project Stream. So I just want you to make a note of that. So number five out of all five services is Steam Link. I gave the visuals three and a half, three out of five, two out of five. Overall, it was 2.2 out of five. And I said the pros were the customization is deep, but it's not stable enough for serious gameplay. That was number five. Number four was Project X Cloud. I said the pros is that it's pretty. It looked pretty. It was one of the prettier ones out of all of the gaming services. But the cons were, again, like Steam Link, it's not stable enough for serious gameplay. I gave it a 2.8 out of 5. No, number, I did this right when I got um, xCloud. I mean, I went, when I got, uh, what do you call that? Um, I think I got. I did this when I got um, uh, uh, Stadia. I might have. But number three, now that these top three are the serious cloud contenders right now. Let me go back. xCloud, Steam Link, they're not even, they're not even, they're just things that exist that you can tinker with. Beta, the shadow beta. Okay. The pros of it is a straight virtual PC. Um, the cons is it doesn't handle network cluster well and very well. And two, it's, it's very expensive. I should have added that. And what I mean by network cluster is that if you got a lot of congestion in your network, like people are watching TV and stuff like that, if there's a lot of things going on in your network that you got it connected to, it, it messes up real easy. It's the, it's the first one to mess up. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. Okay, I did have second was GeForce Now. Now I said GeForce Now, the pros were very well rounded, despite device stream to, meaning no matter what the device is, no matter the quality of the device, it it pretty much had a, a, a stable performance and it, and it was very good to play with. Cons is it's not real robust in options, and, and and at the time that I was testing it, it wasn't robust in options. It got a little bit more robust. When they added the, um, I think they added um, um, ray tracing to it, right? They added ray tracing, RTX technology, and there's some, and it's scalable now. So that that's you know that's still different, but it still doesn't make much of a difference of its placing. It would still be number two to me, but GeForce Now is number two. 
And number one was Stadia and I put production. Okay. So that was the only one that was like in production at the time that I, te well, um, I think Shadow Blade was, no, 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 no. I tested the test version of Shadow Blade. But the pros were as very well-rounded performance despite device stream two. And cons are not real robust in options. And then I would also add to that, um, the games lineup was very limited. Um, and I gave it a 4.3 out of five. So we did the ecosystems in network. There's only three of them. The three are Steam, PlayStation Remote, and a console stream service. Now what those are is they stream to a device while in the same network. So let's just say if you got your Xbox or your PlayStation or your PC with Steam upstairs and you want to stream downstairs to your phone, you know what I'm saying? That's in-network. It doesn't necessarily work when you step out. It only works when you're inside. And that's what Microsoft's console streaming does. It's opposite of xCloud. Don't confuse it with xCloud. It streams internally. All right, so here's how the three work. Number three is Steam Link. Steam Link is just trash. You know what I'm saying? Ever since they made it work out of network two, it's just been bad. I gave that a 2.2 out of five. Here's what number two is. Console stream from Xbox. Pretty, still not stable enough for serious gameplay. I gave it a 3.3 out of five. And believe it or not, PlayStation Remote is the best in-network solution. It was the best performing one. I've tested multiple games that I have on all three platforms. I, I tested about four of them. Um, one is Fallout 76, two was Bulletstorm, three was Destiny, I think four was, 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 uh, oh, I forgot that game yeah i think that yeah but i i've tested a number of games on them and the results were all the same playstation remote be so here, here here here's the problem let's go back here here was the problem with 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 x cloud as you can see everywhere you go x cloud is not is not a top tier service it said that it's in the midway at best, but it's not a top tier service. It's midway at best. So what they're trying to, to serve you with is value. But Xbox is trying to be trying to hit you with value all generation. And gamers have said, well, you know what? You get what you pay for. Like I want quality. I either want quality games or I want quality performance. And when it comes to cloud gaming, you know, you have to have a good balance of both. And the problem with Xbox and Stadia is that they both don't have the games right now when it comes to the cloud. They don't have the games because xCloud right now, they give you 50 games, but whatever. Stadia has more games than that, even though they give them to you for free. But the problem with both is the games where GFN and uh, 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 what do you call it? And, and Shadow outdo them in the games available. But where Xbox loses is the performance. That's why it's not even a top tier service. It heavily drops off because it's not a great performing platform. And people keep saying, well, they're gonna upgrade this and upgrade. I wanna see it work. Until I see it work, I'm not believing nothing. I'm not doubting it, but I'm saying I'm not I'm not going with nothing till I see it work. And all I've seen from Xbox out of network and in network is that it's not a, perf a, a premier performing service. So if I'm a cloud gamer, I don't want to buy a console. I want frictionless gaming, meaning I ain't got time for to be waiting for downloads. I got eight kids. My wife is always trying to get me to power wash the side of the house. I ain't got a lot of time to be waiting for stuff to download. I want frictionless gaming. Boom, my wife wants me to sit in the living room. I got to be able to, I can't move all these cords and stuff in the living room with me. So I want frictionless mobile gaming. But I can't pay a lot of money for it. I got eight kids again. My wife would kill me. XCloud is your worst option. 
Y'all can't see it this way, be, those of you that are stuck to your dedicated devices, because you're saying, well, wherever Xbox falls short in xCloud, I'll just go to my console. No! 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 For a cloud gamer, there is no dedicated device backup. I want a game on the cloud. I want a game on the cloud. Or it could be, I have no other choice but to game on the cloud. I can't afford to get the console. See, that's why y'all keep disregarding the performance woes of xCloud. Because y'all keep thinking back to, well, you can just fall back on the console. You can fall back on the console. Cloud gaming demo does not want to fall back on dedicated devices. And the only group that care about cloud gaming all that much are the cloud gaming enthusiasts that don't want a console. If I don't want a console, 720p, 30 frames per second on only phones and tablets does not do it for me. If I want the best, I got to go to Stadia, the best performance. But then, but what if I say, well, Stadia ain't got the games? Well, then I go to, um, I go to Shadowblade. Shadowblade gives you 4K gaming. You know what I'm saying? And you get access to more games. But then, what if you say, well, Shadowblade is too expensive, and you know I don't necessarily need 4K. So then you go to GFN. All three of those platforms perform at a way where you can game seriously. You can seriously game. And if you want to still game at that top notch, Shadow and Google provide the two best services as far as fidelity is concerned. xCloud is not even in that discussion. It's a good platform as an auxiliary service, or it's a good auxiliary service rather to supplement your dedicated game you're at your mother-in-law's and you and, and, and y'all just got done eating and you're just watching her sleep because your wife is in the back washing the dishes after y'all just had sunday dinner now you can whip out your phone and play some halo that's cool but that's not you being in cloud gamer that's just you using cloud gaming to supplement your console gaming a cloud gamer does not want a dedicated device at all, A, because they can't afford it, or B, they just prefer the frictionless nature of cloud gaming. So this water cooler talk about xCloud being so much better, than it's not even about Stadia. Now let's take Stadia out of the equation. It's not better than, G, it's an insult to GFN. It's an insult to Shadow. And this is not where we should hold the cloud gaming pinnacle to. xCloud is trash when it comes to the cloud gaming demos needs. So I will continue to push back until Microsoft, of the richest companies in the world, does better. Because GFN and Shadow, they ain't got nowhere near as much cash as Xbox do. They've done better. So that's why I keep dog walking X Cloud because they could definitely do better. So those are my thoughts on that. Keep everything in perspective. Understand the gaming demo and stop with all the the the, the non-informed water cooler talk. The actual cloud gamer, the ones that were super enthused on on live and whatever the case may be, and now love this this whole battle between Google. GFN, Shadow, and potentially at some point in time, xCloud. They deserve better than that. Y'all don't know what y'all talking about. So at the end of the day, I'm going to close out with this. Just shut the hell up. Period. That's it from your boy, MM2K. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Because like I always say, who cares what I think. But if you did like what I had to say, check out the links below to follow me. Those links will lead you to the Broadband Bullies, PNTS Network, Hard Knock Digital Culture, 
and the state of your dosage. I hope y'all appreciated what I had to say today. Big ups to my homie Chase. Love you, bro. You take your time to do you, man. We ain't gonna let the, we ain't, we ain't gonna let the we ain't gonna let the foolery and the effery out here mess that up, man. You do what you need to do. You do you. And like Chase said, the community is bigger than just one person. And I would feel the same way if I had to step away. I don't want no riff. If 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 I'm trying to calm things down, the, the situations I got going on at home, and I need internal peace. I don't still want you to be riffraff. Then I get now you got to come back to it and, and, and re-explain yourself. Man, get the hell out of here with that, man. Y'all better stop all that foolishness. Stop it. That's it. That's it from your boy, man. Y'all have a wonderful gaming day. Peace. <laughs>